Please welcome Salil Shetty and Ili Jafar on behalf of Shivas to tell us a little bit about this year's winner. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your patience. It's a long night, but it just keeps getting better. They've saved the most important awards for the end. And I just want to make sure that I don't do this Oscar thing and I don't get the wrong card up. So just checking that we, we have the right one. So uh, I've, I've been sitting and watching all the awards and I was getting increasingly worried that we haven't had a single woman on stage to win an award all evening. The women in Asia, if we have to be honest, face a lot of challenges. There's a lot of challenges in our part of the world for women, but they're also the most powerful people on our continent. So a big applause for the women of Asia. So we're going, to, we're going to do something about women not yet being on the stage. We're fixing it right now. The woman who's getting this Social Entrepreneur of the Year award was sitting at the same table as me. And when I was reading about her, since I'm on the judging committee, when I was reading about her, Googling her, I was thinking, oh, this is some kind of venture capitalist. You know, venture capitalists, they're making a lot of money. And as I got talking to her, I realized that she's actually a human rights activist uh, who's pretending to be a venture capitalist. Um, so uh, uh, this award is presented to a true visionary in her field, a woman who believes that entrepreneurship and human development are mutually inclusive and represent the way forward for low-income communities across the globe so much so that she makes it happen. So let's take a look at some of her work, folks. Coming from an army background in 1999, she moved from her home country of India to the US in order to pursue a degree in industrial engineering at Oklahoma State University. She spent the next decade gaining experience at the likes of Cessna, Xerox and Deloitte. It was while working in the U.S. and living the American dream that she decided to come back to India to do something more meaningful and chanced upon IntelliCap. Within six years she became the CEO. She's been responsible for a number of cutting-edge initiatives, including StartupWave.co, Innovations Labs and the now truly global Sankalp Summit on Sustainable Growth and Entrepreneurialism across the world. To date, Nisha has raised over 300 million pounds, helping over 1,500 social enterprises globally. That's why she is our Social Entrepreneur of the Year. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Great to be on stage with the previous winner, Shalil, of the Shiva Social Entrepreneur. But tonight is this wonderful ladies' night. Welcome to Shivas, welcome to the Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award, Nisha Dutt. But Nisha puts a good deal of her success down to her businesswoman mother and armed forces background, which taught her the value of both discipline and business. Both come in handy, as she's a member of the Group Executive Council of Avishkar Intellicap Group and serves on the boards of listed companies, including Subex and 63 Moons. to be here and I'm feeling special pressure of being the woman here now so <laughs> I, 
I think we should see more women here. Don't you think so? <laughs> Paul, something for you to note. Um, but I'm really grateful to be here. Uh, but you know, a couple of points that I wanted to make very quickly that I feel the need still to have social entrepreneurs in the world points to some sort of in inequity, deep inequity that we are facing in societies. And I think it's not just an issue of South Asia or Africa or emerging economies where we work. It's actually an issue that's coming for all of us. Um, as you must have seen the you know, results of elections that many of you didn't like, the refugee crisis that we don't like, a lot of it is based on inequity. And while we have seen the models of uh, giving, charity, and welfare work very well, but we think one of the most disruptive models is actually to empower disenfranchised to empower low-income communities through entrepreneurship. You know why? Because entrepreneurship brings dignity into the conversation. It's not a handout anymore. You are actually bringing dignity, you are providing livelihood, and you are actually creating wealth. So we are working with entrepreneurs that are actually working with low-income communities, and I'm really inspired when we see people who are taking a very tough task of doing this. So while I think we are doing what we can within our ability, but I, as I look around the room, I see so much privilege here. And I think that if all of us stepped up a little bit more, then you will probably live in the most equitable society ever. Because I strongly believe in that quote, you know, to whom a lot is given, a lot is expected. So I think we should all step up a little bit more. So thank you again.